When you're looking to purchase the UNAS, you've got to make a couple of decisions. And the first one is the type of drive you're going to be putting in your UNAS Pro. Are you going to put in an SSD or are you going to put in an HDD? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at them both side by side and we're going to do some speed tests and see what the difference is between the two and which way you should go. Let's break down the differences between the SSD and the HDD. This image right here, you can see I've just quickly pulled from Google just to give you a rough idea between the two if you don't already know. So the access times we know for SSDs are a lot quicker. There is a lot more random IO on the drive itself, which can actually lead to a shorter lifetime of the device itself. But we'll probably talk about that topic a little bit later. The SSDs tend to be a little bit more reliable. They take less energy and CPU power as well. One of the big factors that you're going to look at regardless of speed is going to be the cost. So I've pulled up two from Amazon right here and you can see the WD Red Pro, the four terabyte, three and a half inch drive is at 7200 RPM speed and that comes in at 143 pounds. And if we look at the four terabyte drive in the SSD version, you can see that is 265 pounds. So there's a big difference in price, normally nearly 100 pound a unit. And if we go to an eight terabyte SSD, you can see that price definitely jumps up to about 500 pounds. Whereas if we went for an eight terabyte HDD, you're looking at almost half the cost. So it's 253 pounds. But ultimately the main aim of this video, whether you choose one or the other, is to give you some real life performance tests to show you the kind of speed that you would expect. I'm not saying I'm anywhere near a storage expert. There are some others out there that do some deeper dives into SSD versus HDD, but in this video, I'm just giving you some real life tests. So looking at the storage behind me, unfortunately, I do not have any four terabyte SSDs, but I do have a couple of one terabyte ones. So I've popped them in here. These are standard crucial drives. So for anybody that wants to know, I'll drop you a link down below. These are the MX 500s and these are standard SSDs. They have the correct connectivity on them and we've popped them in. So we have basic storage protection on them, which means we have two one terabyte drives. So if one fails, the other one takes over until you can replace it again. And if we look down here, we can see what these SSDs do. And it actually tells you, you have an SSD installed. The first big thing that I think we've seen from a couple of reviewers already is the fact that you can only create one storage pool. So if you have a mix of SSDs and if you have a mix of SSDs and HDDs, you will only be able to use the storage of the smallest disk size that you have. So if you have a one terabyte and an eight terabyte, it's only going to, and you have the basic protection, you're only going to be able to use one terabyte on both of those drives. Now, hopefully something in the future that might come is they'll allow you to have multiple storage pools so you can have a faster storage pool and something for HDD, for example, which is going to be a slower storage pool. So the first thing is, let me show you how this is set up. So I have currently a 16 port Pro Max which this is going into the SFP plus port this right here so we have a 10 gig connectivity right there uh, I have a NAS that I was using currently which is connected via gigabit because there's only a gigabit port on it and then we have the Mac Studio which is also connected via 10 gig don't have an aggregation switch at this point so this is the best setup I can do at this point but we do have 10 gig connectivity all the way and just to show you that we have the UNAS Pro right here which we can see is SFP plus 10 gig you can see my Mac Studio also is using 10 gig as well just before we jump into the test let me add if you want to know more about the UNAS and how we get it set up and configured I did do a live stream a little while ago and I'll drop a link down in the description below if you want to see how the configuration works and what happens there. And perhaps I will do a deeper dive video in the next coming weeks. So if that's something you want to see, let me know down in the comments below. I have just got this a little while ago and I haven't set it up fully yet. So I haven't transferred all my data. So it is completely blank at the moment. I have a four gigabyte file, which is a video file. So we're going to start by transferring that. And what I'm going to quickly do is transfer this across and then click start. And we're going to let that run. So this should now pop up and you can see that went across in, so it's almost finished. That went across in just under 10 seconds. That was the first test. So that went through in just under 10 seconds. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was the Blackmagic disk speed test. So we can pop this on here. If we select the target drive and we wanna to connect to the personal drive and we wanna open that. And if we look at the settings, we'll start with a gigabyte file and then we're gonna see what the read and write speed of something like this is. So that got me to about 350 megabytes per second in terms of write speed and 370 megabytes per second in terms of read speed. And we're even pushing 400. Not quite sure why that dropped a little bit there. I think that I did that previously as well. And we have another 400 megabytes per second. So in terms of maximum read and write speed, we're getting 400 megabytes per second. 
And if I just pause it just here, there you go. So 415 megabytes per second in terms of write speed. I don't know why that just dropped to 373. And then 431 in terms of read speed. I'll run one more test on these drives, which is the Amorpheus disk mark. We're going to do five test counts. We're going to do a gigabyte again, and we're going to use the personal drive. So I've selected that and you can see the device name and the node and where it's going to. So it's using SMB. We're going to go and run all four of these tests. So I'm going to let this go off and run, and then I'm going to come back with the results. And there we go. There are the results just there. So if you want to take a look at those, or if you want to pause at this point to review those numbers a little bit closer, I will put a side by side at the end as well. So we can see some of the results and how they came together. On the live stream that I did do previously, there was a question around encrypted drives. So what's the speed difference between using the encrypt drives and off? So now we've seen it with it off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So I'm just going to set a password just here and then we can go ahead and select the drives we want to encrypt. So we only have one drive that we're going to encrypt. So I'm going to apply that. So during this time, your drive will actually stop working um, while it goes ahead and encrypts it. However, just before we do jump in, you can see right behind me just here, you can probably see this line along here, um, that the encrypted drives do reduce your read and write speed. So let's take a look at how much it gets reduced. So we can see right here, there's nothing in the trash folder. And if I go to my drive, there's nothing also inside here. So there's nothing in there at all. Let's go now and move our clock across. And here is the file that we were going to transfer. So let's go ahead and transfer the talking head file and then we can press start and that's now running in the background and we can see straight away it says less than a minute before it was less than 10 seconds. But let's see actually how long this takes to fully complete. That took about 30 seconds to fully transfer over. So we went from 10 seconds non encrypted to 30 seconds with encrypted files. So let's jump straight to the Blackmagic disk speed test. So we can go ahead and run this and we're getting about 140 megabytes per second drop to 130. And then that's write speeds. And in terms of read speeds, we're still getting the 420 megabytes per second. So the write speed is going to be a lot slower because you're writing to the encrypted disk, but reading is still relatively quick. So the last test on the SSD, you can see it's exactly the same as we had the settings last time. So let's go and run those. And that's the read and write speed from the other disk space. You can see the write speed has dropped considerably from where we were, but the read and but the read speed is very similar to previous results. So let's switch over now to the HDD. So I'm going to switch them over and then we'll come back and run some of the same tests. We're back now and the storage itself has been rebuilt completely. So you can now see down here, we have two HDDs. If you're not sure how to upgrade your storage or how you go about it, I have done another video. So check out the links in the description below and you'll see a link to that video as well. And if it's not quite there yet, it will definitely be coming soon. So we can see definitely we have the available storage of 10 terabytes and the storage protection of 10 terabytes. Let's jump straight in with some of the tests. So let's go. Let's go with the first one, which is the Blackmagic disk speed test. So I have already remapped the drive. So if I show you select target, you can see the personal drive is right there and I can click open and there's nothing in there at this point. So let's go ahead and start this and um, we're getting about 182 megabytes in terms of read speed, but 440 megabytes in terms of write speed. So it's actually giving a quite a good read speed on the disks itself over the 10 gig network. And if you wanna see the side-by-side -side comparisons, we will do that right at the end, but we're just running through the tests at this point. So let's move now to the file transfer test. So we know last time that this did this in just under 10 seconds or around about 10 seconds. So same file we're gonna be transferring across. So let's go now. And it does show under 10 seconds again five seconds. Let's see how long this finishes. So that took approximately 21 seconds in terms of transferring that. So it held right at the end there for a few seconds and then it finished it. So it took 21 seconds for that four gig file to transfer, which is still relatively quick for anybody that is looking to transfer a large amount of data. Last but not least, we'll use the disk mark and we'll go ahead and select the personal drive again. That file is still there, but we're going to run this just now. So let's run this and we'll come back and look at the results. And there we go. That's that test complete. So if you want to pause at this point to see the results again, we'll review them all side by side at the end. So we will come back to them shortly. Now I'm going to go ahead and encrypt these drives like we did previously and rerun some of these tests. Let me just add, like I said before, you do experience reduced read and write speeds, which is what we are here to test. So let's start with the Blackmagic speed test and then we'll go ahead and press start. 
and we can see about 160 and it might drop a little bit more I'm guessing at this point. So the write speed drops down to about 100 megabytes per second. And then the read speed again is just as fast as it was previously. So in terms of the read speed, we have no issues with that as, but writing to the encrypted drive, it does slow down that little bit more. Now we had 21 seconds in terms of the transfer. So let's see how long this will take to transfer this data and press start. We can see it's popped up with less than a minute, which is like it did last time. I'll come back as soon as this is complete. That took just over 44 seconds to complete that. And over this, it's double the amount of time that it's taken with the encrypted drive. So let's go ahead and run the last test. And there we go, that's finished. So if you want to pause it again to see those results, but now we're going to recap the rest of the results that we've seen. Let's go ahead now and take a look at all the results that we can see on the screen. So we have four tests that we ran on each of them. Now I will say to start with the Blackmagic speed test is more favored towards video side of things. So you may see a bit of skewed results on this. So we have 450 megabytes per second and 440 megabytes per second in terms of unencrypted. And then encrypted, you can see a massive drop in the write speed to 131 megabytes per second. In terms of the hard drive for unencrypted, we have 182 megabytes per second. And again, a similar sort of read speed. And we drop down to 105 megabits per second when we look at the encrypted on the hard drive. So that's the results there. Do keep in mind though, we have a 10 gig link and I'm gonna quickly show you a conversion before we move to the next one. And if we take a look just here, let me make this a bit bigger so you can see it. And if we say we're running at, we're around about 500 megabits per second, which is about four gigabits per second. We do have a 10 gig link between the two. So we do have that connectivity there. And don't forget the SATA drive on the drive itself is only limited to six gigabits per second. So we're getting four gigabits per second throughput at this point. Next, we'll take a look at the Dismark test, and this is where we were getting 570, is probably the biggest one, or 582 I can see there. So if I quickly go back to my Google search, no. and if I bring this back across and we look at the 580 megabytes per second, we're getting about four and a half gig in terms of throughput. So again, still not the six gig that you would see, but it's giving you a rough idea in terms of what numbers we would get. And the interesting part of this one is the write speed. We're getting 237, which is a little bit lower than we were seeing before, but the other three results are pretty similar to what we were seeing in the Blackmagic speed test. The final one was the four gigabyte transfer file. So again, less than 10 seconds for an unencrypted drive, which is an SSD. If you move to encrypted, you're looking at 30 seconds. You're looking at 20 seconds for an unencrypted hard drive, so that's the HDD, and then 44 seconds if it's encrypted. So you see the difference between the two in terms of speeds, whether you're encrypting your drive and not encrypting your drive. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know your sort of results that you get on your drive if you've done any tests or if you're seeing something different. And if you want a link to the products that I've used, they're also down in the description below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.